so I want to thank Rodney Hicks for joining me today. How are you doing today, Rodney? I am in my breath. I am sitting in peace and calm. Really? Yeah, so I miss all there? the world. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. There's so much going on. Like, how are you doing with COVID right now? You know, I'm doing really well. You know, um, I'm grateful that uh, it seems like there's a downshift, but then there's also an upshift in other places. And so, honestly, I am just, you know, Tristan, I'm filled with compassion for so many people at this time. And uh, because there's a lot of people suffering and hurting and loss of jobs. And so my heart is really on that. It's just kind of, how can I be a blanket? <laughs> you know, how can I be, a, a, you know what I mean? A warm, just presence uh, amidst hardness, which is rightfully so for a lot of things, you know? Yeah. But it's like, oh, okay, this is my lane. Okay, great. I'm going to stay in this lane of love. Got it. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad that you're, you know, you seem to have a, your own take on this. So I think I was reincarnated into a hippie. I swear. I love it. I mean, I love your shirt, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, I, I am, I've graduated to this state of being in my life. You know, it's like, you know, I spent my 20s and 30s just, who are you? You know what I mean? Like so many people, I like yourself, I'm sure you know who you are. You're like someone I think who knew who you were immediately yeah. and said, this is me and I'm walking with this. And me, I was someone who, who do you want me to be? Who do you want me to be? You know, you know, until I realized, oh, this is, this is, this is where I sit here. And I, I, I'm a peace practitioner now. For like six years, I've been studying that. Uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, Pema Chodron, all that. Woo, it's a lot. And I, I'm here for it. And um, it is a deep practice. And um, every day, you know, you get stronger and it's not about perfection. You know, it's not, a light, it's not about trying to be the perfect person, but it is just about living in mindfulness and living in, I see you, I see you. And, and you know, and just how can I make this world and myself uh, better? You know, and it starts with you. And everybody has their own way of doing it. So there's no judgment here, honey. <laughs> it's a give and take with everybody. I mean, everyone. you treat everybody the way you want to be treated, that kind of thing. And you have to, if you reflect positivity, you're going to get that back. There it is. There it is. And you then have to come to a place where you kind of have to not care what anyone thinks about you. Yeah. And because it's really at the core, none of your business unless it becomes your business, right? But if you're walking your life in a certain way and, and you get to that point of, oh, okay, it, things just fall off. And it's like a tree, you know? The leaves drop, honey, the dead leaves go, <laughs> you know? And like this movie, it's like, I remember when I read the script Oh, I, I, it was so beautiful and simple. And I thought, oh, this, this is really moving, <laughs> you know, in like the simplest way. And it wasn't like overly complicated, you know, but it was something that about Chosen Family and I love Chosen Family, you know? I mean, as we all get older, we realize, well, Chosen Family is like sometimes the strongest uh, link of survival for everyone. And that's, I think, what this movie beautifully represents. So tell beautiful. me about it, The Mighty Oak? Yes, Mighty Oak. Yeah, you know, um, it is about uh, Gina and, uh, and, and Oak. And Gina is, uh, her brother died uh, in a fatal car accident uh, 10 years to when the movie takes place. And Oak is a 10-year-old, like, prodigy guitar prodigy and Tommy Reagan who plays him he's just outstanding like and Gina who plays my daughter like the two of them are not Gina sorry uh the young lady who plays my daughter Gina Gina Harris she's brilliant and just to be surrounded by 
uh, this cast and, and uh, Janelle Parrish, you know, all of these people, Carlos Pena Vega and Ben Milliken and, and Alexa, I was just sitting and I'm the old guy, you know? And I just was like, this is so awesome because they were giving a 100 every take, every performance, and we all got to know each other as this extended family. Yeah. And I just, I was like, I really like these people a lot. And it made, it was evident in the filming because it was just easy, That's you know? Incredible. Mm -hmm. And Nana as well. Like, I'm just naming the whole cast, but like, they, they're very special people really special people and and i watched the movie last week and i sat there and you know it's not a movie that i would have watched had i not been in it you know um but it's like i'm like oh my god i can actually call my my friend nikki who i'm the godparents to our little daughters and say you have to watch this movie you know they're gonna love this movie because you know it's an inspirational family film you know it's a light family film and i think we need that kind of thing right now you yeah, know. definitely. So, I, needless to say, I, I can tell you really enjoyed filming with everybody. <laughs> really did, yeah. That's incredible. So, where can we watch the Modi Oak? Yes, uh, it is out in drive-ins right now, you know, and uh, select movie theaters, I think. But it is going to be released um, on Apple TV, Hello, and, um, and Amazon Prime uh, on July 7th. Okay, so and July 7th. Yes, streaming, and uh, it's going to be exciting, you know? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like an incredible movie. I cannot and wait. And Raven Simone's in it, too. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, so you, you worked with her? We did one scene together, and, you know, she came in for the day and just fit right into this family. Like, I, I can't say enough great things about her. She is everything that you'd want her to be. Does that make sense? Yes. I mean, I grew up watching her. We like, all did, like, honey. Yes. 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 Awesome. <laughs> and she did not disappoint. Did not. What, I mean. What, what was her part, if you don't, if you can tell me? Yes. Um, and you know, it's funny because, you know, when you do a movie, it's all out of sorts, right? So I didn't even know. I knew who she was playing vaguely. You know, um, she is a promoter, I believe. Okay. And um, then when I watched the movie, I was like, okay, got it. She's a reporter and uh, not a promoter, a reporter, and like uh, a big deal reporter. And so they want her to kind of get this story. And, but even in her, like the three lines in that one scene, she just, she knows funny inside and out. Right. Like I think she breathes it. <laughs> so, I mean, she just like, she's just such a, a genius when it comes to comedy. I love it. Yes, yes. And, and it's effortless. It's yeah. like, <laughs> no, and just being around her, she's just so, I mean, someone who has been, you know, coming from a child actor to a, a grown woman, you know, yeah. usually, you know, I, I think there's a heaviness, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I started acting when I was 17, you know what I mean? So I know too, there's that, you've been there, done it, been through the whole thing. And no, honey, she was just like, hey, y'all. <laughs> I mean, you would love her. You would yeah. absolutely love her. Yeah. I, I believe it. I mean, I've always I followed her for the longest time. Then I saw she just got married and that kind of yes. thing. So that's awesome. Uh, in five <laughs> month, you know, it's like, uh, and I'm happily gay, you know, and it's like, um, and so it's really great. And, and, you know, I say that because it took me so long to say that. Yeah. You know, to be proud of that. And, um, and I so am, <laughs> you Is there know. Was a time that you felt like you couldn't be yourself with that? Oh, yes. I, I think I was a late bloomer, you know, um, very much so. I was in a 10-year relationship with, uh, you know, a beautiful human being uh, who was in closet, who was closeted, you know, and was, was much older than me. And I just, for 10 years, I was in this relationship with this beautiful person but it was very complicated because I was like, well, I really am starting to love being gay and being proud of, you know, who I am. But then, so I thankfully left the relationship uh, on good accord, you know, um, and, and with love because yeah. I was in that relationship nine years too long. 
oh, that's I, I just went in, right? It's yeah. like nine years too long. Um, but because we left, I left the relationship with respect and with kindness and compassion because I said, I, I will never understand your journey, you know, and all I have is love for you. But I know that I need, in order for me to actually live my life, I'm going to have to figure this out. And let me tell you, it was like some months later, then I met my husband, literally. Wow. And my life just opened. This was 10 years ago, nine years ago. My life opened up and I learned then to love myself, you know, and I learned to appreciate so they're therefore i've always loved people right i was that person who went out of their way for everybody you know and you overextend and but i'm glad i i glad i was that person because now there is this beautiful lane of focus of and i have so many people in my life that i love and then i know love me and Man, if that's not a beautiful place to be, it, it, it's, and I never thought I could be in that place. You know what I mean? Right. Um, because when you're closeted, all you're doing is lying every single day. And you're having to retra retrace your, what did I say to that? I mean, I, I can't begin to tell you how many times I had to say to friends, hey, remember when I said I was straight? <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, so, and, and that parallels with this movie because I would not be, have been in the place to be this kind of uh, older mentor in this film. And I've always been a mentor in a way, you know? But like to play it out on film and to be someone who is kind and, you know, and, and is easy and, and is not uh, wearing the weight of the world on their shoulders uh, and to know that I've come to that place in my life and to see it on film and to go, I'm proud of that. You know, it, 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 it does something to my heart. It really does. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. I, I love that. Oh my gosh. It, it's an amazing journey. So tell me more about your back history. I'd love to learn. Like, so you said you started acting at 17. Yes. I was on this TV show called Dance Party USA. Okay. I've never yes. seen it. <laughs> I know. You can YouTube it and, uh, and you, you literally, if you find me, you're going to, oh my God. Um, <laughs> I was, you know, uh, I was that kid in school who, like, was in everything. <laughs> you know, the yearbook was filled with my pictures, but I was picked on, you know, all of these things. But yet I had art. And so I just created and just wrote and all of these things. And so I made my Broadway debut several years later, a few years later, when I was 20 years old. Oh, my God, I'm looking back, I'm like, Jesus. In the um, original Broadway cast of Rent. And that was amazing. And I mean, it was amazing looking back on it, right? Yeah. Um, but in retrospect, I should have still been in college when I was in that show. Uh, and I, so therefore I had to learn, I grew up in New York basically, you know, because I didn't finish college. So New York City became my college for years. You know what I mean? Of uh -huh. just, when you're coming in in the industry high there on a level, on a certain level, it's like you have to keep up with yourself. Yeah. And I decided to like, you know what? I don't want to take the express train. The elevator is broken. I'm going to take the stairs. And in retrospect, I guess that's what was happening. And, and uh, you know, I was fortunate to have things happen for me, but I passed on a lot of certain things because I wanted to stay in theater because I wanted to learn and uh, learn in that way and grow. And uh, yeah, so I uh, come from away with my last Broadway show and that was three years ago. And um, so the book in my Broadway career with Rent and Come From Away because I have a neurological condition called spasmodic dysphonia and uh, I can speak clearly now. But because of it, three years ago, I couldn't, I could barely talk. I could barely talk, yes. And I could, could not sing. My singing is very different now. It takes longer for me to make it happen. Um, so, but I can sing, but there was 
a long period where I couldn't. And then my dad died. And literally, the morning that he died, I woke up and I could talk again. I literally could talk again. And then 12 days later, on my birthday, I regained the capacity to sing. So already leaning into Thich Nhat Hanh and all of these things and, and, and healing and all of that, I went even further in it and just allowed myself to sit in the, you know, healing is, is painful. It's not easy. And you have to like check your whole self, honey, you know? And I, had, I did that. And I think had I not done all of that healing, I think I would have been like a crumbling mess in, in today's society and world, or I would have been just angry, you know? And, and I say to people, you know, who, you know, rightfully fist in the air and, you know, I, but for Rodney Hicks, I have lived my, pretty much my whole life with my fist in, in the internal. And now I'm like palms out, honey, and just vibrating high in a beautiful way because it's like the world may be vibrating in this way, but I'm gonna work so that I don't absorb that energy. And therefore I can emit my own vibrational energy. And, um, and I, don't, I don't want anything from anyone. That's the thing, it's like, I just wanna put out love and compassion and stay in my lane and support as many people as possible uh, just because of love and through love, you know? Kindness is one of the biggest gifts in the world and it's invaluable. Yeah. It costs nothing. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> I wish more people understood that too. I think some, so many people get depressed and they get in this like negative funk that they don't understand that there's a way out. And there's, a, I mean, if you just kind of embrace positive people and you surround yourself with positive people that, you know, you, you can be more than your mind is telling you. Oh, say that again. Just <laughs> you can be more than your mind is telling you. But that's, that's the thing. It's like we have to get out of our minds. We have to get out of ourselves and take those long walks. Yeah. And, you know, wow, okay, don't believe the very first thing that comes to your head because it's probably not true, yeah. you know. And also the self-defeating that we all do. And I, I, I share to people, I'm like, you know what? As an exercise, look in the mirror and see if you can say, see if you can think three things that you love about yourself and literally say them to yourself. And then say three things that you don't like. That'll come out quicker. <laughs> That'll always come out quicker. Yeah. And until it doesn't. And I did a practice. I think for six months straight, I looked in the mirror every day and I said, I love you until I believed it. And now I go to bed, I say, thank you. I wake up in the morning, I say, thank you. That's my prayer, <laughs> literally, <laughs> thank you, period. You know? Yeah, I mean, you have to keep telling yourself these positive things. I mean, even if you write a letter and stick it on your mirror, kind of like what you were saying, like, like put something positive every day that you see. Even now, like you always have your cell phone, put a positive quote as your cell phone cover, you know, just something. And it's not, you know, false hope. You know, a lot of cynics can say that. It's like, no. Actually, to be honest, now is the time for light workers. Now is the time for light workers because it's like shine that light, honey, you know, and blind people with this love because they'll either go the other way or they will keep moving. Exactly. See, or they will learn. Anyway. Exactly. And that's kind of like, I just started this podcast not too long ago during COVID and yeah. I, and preferably the reason why I did this is because I wanted to get to know people like you and and see the positive in the world because mm. I was getting to where I was depressed because you know I, I'm a photographer and I was losing clients. I've seen your work. Oh well thank you. It's fierce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I appreciate that. Yes. So you took the time to look at it. Yes. But, uh, I mean I was losing clients and um, I bartend as well and my job mm. had gotten um to where it was takeout only so they didn't need a bartender and it just I got really depressed there for a second and then I was like you know what 
I'm not going to be that way. And I'm going to start a mm. podcast. I'm going to, I'm mm. going to do something virtual to help my business and to get to know people and to bring myself out of that funk. And I absolutely, I think that was the best thing for me. I mean, I'm meeting, I'm talking with you today and. Mm. And vice versa, likewise, because <laughs> you brought up depression. I love that you brought that up because I was someone who lived life. I, I lived with depression until I didn't. And I, I mean, literally in my 20s and 30s, I would not have thought that I would have uh, been, I would not have come over and not lived a life of, without depression. You know, I thought that was gonna be my handbag, honey. <laughs> you know, I, I thought, okay, what's gonna be, you know, it's, and to wake up and have a feeling of lightness and ease, and to not be filled with rage is, and yes, I know everything that's going on in our world today. And I breathe love to people who don't get it, <laughs> to people who are like, I'm going to be stuck in my ways or whatever, or who are seeking division and all of that. I am like, you know what? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I grew up in a very integrated uh, way with everyone. So that's where I live. And I'm like, I, I, I don't, I don't want to separate. I don't want, I don't want blacks over here, whites over here, Asians over here. I, I'm sorry. I, I want us all to be together and do this together. It's like, no one's going to lose a piece of the pie. It's like, there's no pie to lose. You know, it's called humanity. And that's all people are asking is that we all are treated equal, you know, in, in, in the eyes of this beautiful world that we have the opportunity to live in. Yeah. So Corona's like, um, y'all need to take a pause because <laughs> y'all are killing each other. So, and the world needs to heal. The, the earth needs to do its growing and green and, you know, and so I believe that that's what we've been asked to do is to take this pause and stop and literally smell the roses and look at the birds and the butterflies. And yes, all the stuff around us, yes, change. Yes, change. I believe in change. I also believe that people can change and that organizations can change. And yeah, change takes time. We all know that. But I think people got the memo. You know, oh, Gianna Harris. I kept saying Gina, Gianna Harris, who plays my daughter. And she's awesome. So um, excuse me for that. But, um, but yeah, it, it, Tristan, it, it's, it's, people can think it's simple to say, I believe in love and peace, but peace doesn't mean you're a doormat or something to walk over. You know that peace is actually really strong and it's hard you know but it's possible and that's why i love this movie as because watching it you everyone has a story in that movie everyone even if they're not talking about it and like to see these we're, we're all these adults helping this kid you know because his mother is is basically is dying you know she um is not an addict you know she is sick and she cannot take care of her son in the way that she, she, she thinks she can. And, but her son is rescued by all of these guardian angels. And, um, and, 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 and it just is a beautiful movie. And it's interesting because you don't see my wife or know that I have a wife in the film. So in my mind, I was a single gay dad. How you doing? <laughs> in my mind, I was this single gay dad, you know? And, um, you know, cause I'm like, no, no, I don't want him straight. No, I don't. He's a single gay dad, you know, who's raising his daughter and my husband died. That literally is like, was my backstory. And now you know. That's awesome though. I love that. And you know what? Times are changing and that's what we need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. awesome. So I'm trying to think of something else to talk about. I feel like we went through all of the questions I had for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna zip around. So are you working on anything new right now? You know, I just had a reading of uh, a new play that I wrote called Just Press Save. 
And I'm very excited about it. Michael Greif uh, directed the reading, who directed Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway and Rent as well. And um, it went so well. It's about uh, six uh, young people who are trying to finish their senior year and two are undocumented. And so they're hoping they don't get deported. And they're from Honduras. And another student is a black trans male going to school presenting as male for the first time. And then there's a, a white kid, uh, Curtis, who is in love with gaming, but he also has a crush on uh, one of the other of kids who is closeted, you know? And then there's Bolin, who used to listen to gangster rap music. He's Chinese and he wears all black because he. He's like so empathetic to the Black Lives mo uh, movement, but he doesn't know what BLM stands B BLM stands for <laughs> until his black girlfriend tells him. Like she basically lists every name of every black person who's died, <laughs> and then she's just like, then she never talks about it again. You know, yeah. it's like she just puts him on read. She's like, if you're gonna be that cause, know the cause you're fighting for. Right. It's so subtle, but yet, and she's dealing with. Uh, you know, it problems at home. It's a simple, I turned it into a simple piece that promotes positivity and uplifting and joy because the original version, you know, it was the darker parts of being young, like drug addiction and all of these things, guns. And that was, nobody's picking that one up, honey. And, like, <laughs> and also, and it's okay because I started writing that version 20 years ago. You know, and I'm like, at 46 years old, and I have this beautiful opportunity to put this work into the world as a new piece. What do you want to put out there for our youth today? You know what I mean? I really thought hard on that and was just like, no, I don't really want to write a character really going through drug addiction and, 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 and having a white character say the N word, not in a negative, but in like, yo, it's that kind of way. And I said, I, I don't know, no, let, let, I, I want something that's from the heart and like a Dawson's Creek and like freaks and geeks and all that before the stage. So that it's like young people are so smart and filled with heart. And I said, let, let's lift that story amidst all the chaos of this year, because it takes place a year from now. Wow. So they're unpacking all of 2020. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Right. So, so I jump in the future there. Yeah, so this movie and, and, and Just Press Save, they all kind of line up together in a way, you know, that I feel comfortable talking about Just Press Save in, uh, in conjunction with promoting uh, Mighty Oak, you know? Yeah. It's, um, but and Matt Ryland, man, Matt Allen, who wrote Mighty Oak, man, I love him so much. And Sean McNamara, who directed it, uh, they just get it. They get it mm -hmm. every single day. And it was just amazing. And I was brought on to this by the exec producer, uh, Frank Reagan and Amy Reagan. And they just, I hadn't worked for like a year and a half because of spasmodic dysphonia. And they asked if I would like to put myself on tape for this. And I said, sure. And so it was, my, it was my first job after being told by doctors I would never talk clearly again. So, and the movie does what reincarnation, you know, and, and miracles. And so it kind of fit right in, you know? Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, I, you talking to me right now, I would never even know. No, and that's why I think I, I, I bring it up to, for awareness, because I'm like, you know, I could not talk about spasmodic dysphonia, but it's a part of me, you know? And, um, you know, and, and it, yeah, I'm handicapped in a certain way, you know, I, I don't have the singing voice that I had before, but I can still sing, but it just takes a lot to do it. And, um, and also it took a lot to not be self-conscious about it. Right. You know. But, um, so when you were doing Broadway, did you, did you have a lot of fright because of that? Did you feel like, like fear that you were going to mess up or something? Tristan, oh my gosh, you have no idea. It was... You, you know, you're dealing with a multi-million dollar show, job that you're in, right? Yeah. And I was with the show for three years. And then in this third year, all of a sudden, I can't really talk. It was like, I, mm, how can I put it? There, I, had, I was having panic attacks on stage. Like the audience wouldn't know, but I, the heart was going, everything. Because 
I didn't know what was going to come out of my mouth when I opened it. Sometimes air came out. Sometimes my voice was pitched higher, it was pitched lower, and I had no control over it. I was at doctors every week and just, I wanted to cry every single day, but I showed up. And it was the biggest lesson in gratitude that I think I, I will ever have in my life. And I just was happy that the producers and our director and our company literally held my hand with just such compassion. And when, you know, it's a multi-million dollar business, easily, they would have been so in the right to say, hey, we love you, but, you know, we got a show to put up. Not at all. Like, not one second. They even helped me with, uh, with, with taking voice, voice lessons so that the voice, ooh, uh -huh, so that the voice coach could get me. I had to literally relearn how to sing while I was doing the show. Wow. And talk again as well. So, and, and, and it's, and I would not have gotten through those five months had it not been for the kindness of everyone. And I still went out and signed autographs. I just didn't open my mouth, honey. I was just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was so bad that people who had seen me in the show in, in different cities, they thought I was a different person, you know? And so slightly a little like, but, but it was, I sounded, I mean, literally, it was like, you know, oh, that's the Tracy Morgan guy. <laughs> that's how my voice worked, you know? And I, I was, you know, low key, very like sad about that. I love Tracy Morgan, but I'm like, I don't sound like that generally. So it, um, but you know, I held it in that experience taught me about strength and taught me that a God is not going to give you anything you cannot handle. The universe is not going to give you anything you can't handle, whether you believe in God or not. Right. It's just like, we're here. We got here somehow, you know? Exactly. And I mean, I personally believe God is in us and everyone and is around us and every living thing and flowers and everything. Yes. I'm that guy. And, um, but I, I don't prescribe to any one religion, any religion. I, I believe my, my philosophy in religion is kindness. You know, Dalai Lama says that so perfectly. And uh, every day I'm trying to continue to mold the clay that I'm standing in into concrete, you know, so that I, I really can be a vessel. And it's all, I just like, I didn't ask for this state of being, you know, I really didn't. And I just, it's where I'm at. Ah. It definitely sounds like you're exactly where you need to be. Yeah, you know, I, I, I thank you for that. I, 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 you know, and again, it's not all perfect, you know, but I've learned how to, I've learned how to work through my life, you know, and work through anytime you feel sad or whatever, I breathe. And I mean, I meditate every day and I do Qigong every morning, but I breathe and I take courses. Like I'm taking this one course, Freedom to Love right now by Pema Chodron. I recommend it to everyone. It's so good. Okay, I'll have it, to look that up. Freedom to Love. It is so good by Pema Chodron. I, I'll, that's all I'm gonna say. It, it's like, there's no, she's not talking at you and all of that. It's like, it's so inspiring and it's quite beautiful and it makes you really look at people differently. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to get this now. I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah. You taught me into it. <laughs> so I'm going to have one last closing question for you. Yes. Okay. So what do you have to say to younger people who are going through a difficult time right now and mm -hmm. trying to branch maybe in your industry or in any industry? What, what would you say to them? Oh, yes. What I would say to young people who are in the world today and just going through it <laughs> with a capital IT, Breathe, pause, listen to your heart and know that if you are going through any kind of suffering or any kind of just whatever, if you have issues at home or, or parents that aren't listening or whatever, it does get better. I am such living proof of that. It gets better. And if that 
can be your guiding thought because I know that it will feel like this will never end, <laughs> you know, whether you're being bullied or what, whatever it is, know that you always have tomorrow and that you can make that choice to love yourself. And if someone is like treating you like crap or just treating you wrong, no is the most amazing word in our vocabulary. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really in every is. single way. You know, I don't. I feel horrible right now. Do you? And you can break that down. Why? What? And journaling. Journal. 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 You know? And really just know that it gets better. And I know it sounds so simple, three words, but... I mean, you're talking to someone who from the age of four all the way in my 20s and 30s, I just looked at life through the lens of fear and angst and anxiety. And now I'm, you see what I'm wearing, you know? And I, I, I used to care and worry so much about what everyone thought of me. And that's the root of it for everyone. I think the root of suffering is you, you care about what everyone thinks of you and you don't have all of that caring for yourself. <laughs> you yeah. know, when you start caring about you, then you effortlessly will care about everyone. And then you also will effortlessly let go of over caring or putting or making up, oh, they don't like me because they haven't returned my text <laughs> or they haven't da da da. You start to lose those patterns. And, and the more you know it when you're young, the better equipped you're gonna be in your 20s and 30s. Like, I wish there was representation that we have now when I was in my 20s and teens. And, and you know, I, I do, you know, but we were, we came up in a time with AIDS, the 90s, you know, and just fear of being gay, queer, all that associates with it. And now young people are in a time where you see all of these positive representations, yeah. you know? And it's like, oh. So I say you can be whoever you choose to be and be you. That's incredible. You are such a beautiful soul. Thank you oh. so much for talking today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, it, it really was through many amazing people that helped me. I am not, I am not who I am today had it not been for amazing people in my life who saw me when I didn't see me. Mm. So I feel that my life living and my life until the day I die is for everyone I've met in my life. And that includes me. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's, so, I, I really appreciate that. Like that, that was incredible. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm excited for my listeners to hear what you have to say. Mm. You really, you've got to me. I'm trying hard not to cry, like internally. <laughs> wow, I, I appreciate you. I just, you know, I'm just, I'm here to just sit in my most authentic self. And what's coming out is love, compassion, and peace, and kindness. And those, that's what's leading me, you know. And amidst all the uproar of the world, it's like, well, I'm supposed to be standing in peace here. And, um, and I'm not judging anyone who with, with, with raised fists. I'm like loving you. And I'm not judging people who are racists. You know, it's like what, I'm, what I am doing is I'm going to send you so much love. <laughs> and like subconsciously, you know, and so that hopefully people who are holding on, you know, to old ideology, old beliefs, that the grip of systemic inherited American trauma will start to loosen, you know, and people will start to understand and see that we are all human beings and we are all worthy of love. Yes. Cannot agree more with you. <laughs> no. Thank you so much, Rodney. Thank you. Uh, have an incredible afternoon. You too. Thank you for taking your time out with me today.